Hi everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. Along with Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. Just your typical Monday here in the Video Blog offices. There is a lot going on today. We'll still talk about Bison soccer. Bison basketball starts this week. We're hopping right into the winter sports season, Jeffrey. And football's still going on, by the way, too. What's everybody talking about today, though? <laughs> Not Western Illinois, which we will talk about in the a second. Green the green helmets. The North Dakota State will go away from its traditional gold or yellow helmets and it's debuted a green helmet. Kolpak broke the story earlier today on Inforum.com. We got to see him for the first time about an hour ago. This is what they will look like for the Harvest Bowl on Saturday against Western Illinois. What do you think, Jeffrey? I love them. I yeah, think they should, they should wear them every, every game now. They should go, <laughs> I mean, back to green. It's a nice look. It's a clean look. I like the, the gold, the green. It's... Um, you know, I'm no fashion police when it comes to helmets, but <laughs> this is what you have to do yeah. these days in college football. And Chris Kleiman said that today. He goes, you know, kids, uh, believe it or not, kids ask about this stuff. We were talking to the yeah. AD after the game, and he said, believe it or not, kids are asking. These are some of the things you need to do. And a lot of it's recruiting, you know. And, and I know it's just kids, right, and, and, and uniforms and stuff. but It's huge now. But it's, it's part of the you know, piece of the puzzle that, that you have to have. When you look at on a Thursday or a Friday leading up to a college football Saturday, what is everybody tweeting about? It's about this is our look for this particular game. And right. NDSU has obviously went that way in 2011 when the gold jersey came in. And I remember Craig Bowl was not a huge fan of that. The players loved it. They haven't lost in those jerseys, by the way. And Kleiman said today, the players are fired up about this, about wearing a new look coming up on Saturday. Well, I guess they're college kids. And, you know, I look at it as if, if it's something that they want to do, and as long as they don't go crazy. I mean, I, I think you still need, <laughs> in this part of the world, you still need to keep those traditional things mm -hmm. with the uniforms. Uh, you still, but I mean, you still need the green top, the yellow gold. You, you still need to do that for the most part. But uh, in this day and age, uh, you know, were the alums all in favor of it? That's well, Kleiman said he talked to quite a few former players and said they were on board. Yeah. So I guess that's the most important thing. Approximately 50 alumni and football supporters donated to fund the helmets for the next five years, is what Matt Larson told us. Just doing some rough math, Jeff, knowing how much the helmets cost at least $35,000 to, you know, put helmets on everybody on the team. It's not a cheap venture to go down this road, but you look at it in the Valley. South Dakota did chrome. SDSU just a couple weeks ago debuted, I believe, a fourth helmet with the jackrabbit on the side that's a different color. So even teams in the Missouri Valley have went down this road. Yeah, like I said, you're not going to see, you know, an Oregon type of thing where yeah. they have some new different combination of crazy <laughs> uniforms every week but yeah. I think it's uh, I, I I just like the green uh, it's a good something look. different yeah the mat look on it is pretty sharp for uh, for North Dakota State now let's talk about the actual football game they shall play? we they're playing Western Illinois this upcoming Saturday the Leathernecks back in Fargo Jeff for the first time since 2010 when your guy Matt Barr the left-handed wizard was the quarterback and Western won that game 28-16 the nerd stat for you Western's never lost in Fargo they've been here twice and they won both times yeah they've only been here twice because of the 10 team schedule Correct. and and Western was on the uh, don't play every yeah, in the dropped out list there however yeah. I'm trying to say <laughs> correct but they they won those two games cuz Matt Barr was a great quarterback yes. and he really controlled that game and they won the game they're a physical team they back in 08 and 10 they were physically they could physically match yep. NDSU and I think they're getting pretty close to that now Nico Watson he, what is he, like 290 He's a pounds? bowling ball is what he, he is. He's a yeah. huge running back, and he's going to be a load to bring down. You remember Herb Donaldson, the yes. old running back, and he was such a load for NDSU to try to stop it in the rest of the Missouri Valley. Nico Watson is in that same mode. You love Bob Nielsen. You've been talking about Western since we got uh, started with this football season. They have, were off to a great start. Now they've come back down to earth. They've lost their last two. They're 4-4 four and four on the season off the loss to Illinois State and then this past weekend falling to Youngstown. So they're in playoff survival mode right now they are and but I, the fact they're at this stage of, of the season I think is a big factor is this quarterback right here Trent Norvell yeah. number 14 big kid six foot five throws the ball well uh, sees the field well and again he's got that height I don't know if he's tremendously fast but he's good enough to rush for you know a, a good a decent chunk of yards I mean so 
I, I just, uh, it's, a, it's a physical team, and, and I think they'll match up pretty well with NDSU. You look, the guy who he threw to is Lance Lenore, number seven there, who's a tremendous downfield threat, 746 yards and four touchdowns. This is a team that should have beaten NDSU last year. That game in Macomb was dominated by Western. The Bison needed a trick play to pull that one out of the fire. You have to know they're going to come to Fargo and know they're playing for their season on Saturday. Yeah, the reason they won was Johnny Rocket the, yeah. Rocket the Rocket yeah. Arm. Is that what he called himself yeah. after the game? Yeah, his arm, he said, after yeah. the game, right? On, do, on doing that flip-back pass <laughs> to Carson Wentz, and that turned out to be the big play yeah. of the game. NDSU is going to, you know, they, I think their personality has changed in the last two weeks under really his stick. Yeah. It's really changed the chemistry of the offense. It's not so much... Carson Wentz, let's depend on his right arm. Easton Stick provides a little better perimeter running game, and it's been hard to defend for these teams the last couple of games. We were, and we thought there's no way Southern Illinois is going to let Easton Stick beat him with his legs, and yet he still goes out and runs for a buck 38 on yeah. 16 carries, and you just wonder, okay, what's Western going to do to try and defend that? And Western's defense, I should note, is better than Southern Illinois' defense. Well, it's not. I mean, most defenses. <laughs> yes, are better I know. I'm not going out on a limb there. Southern Illinois' defense. <laughs> They're, they're better because I think they have better linebackers mm -hmm. and they're a little more physical up front. So that'll be present a challenge. But you could throw 11 guys in the box. You know, why are things working? I just think Easton Stick provides, you know, is he going to go right, left, middle? He's got uh, all avenues of the field at his disposal for the, that read option. It's really fascinating to see the Bison go back to old school football. And you asked Chris Kleiman about that. And I don't know if it's a, not a blessing in disguise is the right word. but And Kleiman said it today. We knew that with Carson Wentz at quarterback, there were different things he could do, and Carson's even said it. Now you're, he's upset they're doing this read option stuff that they weren't doing when he was the quarterback. Right. Sometimes I wonder with Carson if everybody else said, okay, Carson, you're the guy, you just do the job, and, and we'll yeah. try to you know. block for you. I know yeah. it's simplifying it, right. but maybe the fact that when he went out, a little sense of urgency yeah. from their other players maybe. saying, wow, geez, here's our All-American out. Yeah. I guess I better up my level of play. Well, offensive line certainly has played no better the last two They've games. They've been awesome the last two weeks. You look at the Valley standings, the game of the week, I'm, and I'm not shy to say it, it's not in Fargo, it's in Brookings on Saturday. Illinois State plays at South Dakota State. The Bison fans are going to be in the rare position to cheer on South Dakota State because if NDSU can win out and Illinois State loses this game, then we're back into that GPI tiebreaker mess we were in last year for the automatic bid. You might as well just put the tiebreaker. You have it memorized, <laughs> I think you? after last year, yes, I believe so. We'll put it on the blog every day <laughs> just so people can see. But what a game that's going to be on Saturday, huh? South Coast State, though, has got to prove it can handle and hang with a physical it team. It hasn't yet. Because with Northern Iowa and NDSU, those two, I think both those teams handled them at the line of scrimmage. Now comes Illinois State, which yeah. has a similar physical look to them. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to handle Trey Roberson and, and that read option game. What do you make of the fact, and Kleiman talked about this before we wrap up on football, about what the Valley is doing. It's almost going back to what we saw in 2012 and 2013, kind of vulturing themselves where I don't think five teams are going to get in. Four, would I think, would be lucky at the moment. I really do. I told you that at the I know, of the you year. Did. You're always right, Colt. On that 1.0 bracketology, <laughs> you got five teams in. You're thinking six. At the moment, at that time I was, but it's it's not happening now because the way the teams are playing. Do you think they weren't going to beat each other up? I thought that there were teams that would maybe separate themselves. Obviously, but that's you not thought. that did not happen though. No. Kind of surprised by that? No, or no? not at all. No. Not, not no. at all. It's just, there's just too many good teams, and you don't have the one dominant team like NDSU yeah. in 2013. The other football team at NDSU is having a tremendous season. That's Mark Cook's soccer team, which will play in the Summit League tournament down in Brookings on Thursday. They clinched the Summit League championship. Didn't lose a game in conference play. Sierra Bottom has been unbelievable in net. A senior-laden team, now to a one-and-done situation. Boy, they got a great shot to go back to the NCAA tournament first time in five years. If they yeah, do they've that. competed well all year, and I think having the goalkeeper, and I've watched her on a few occasions, yeah. that uh, you know, she's pretty athletic, a pretty athletic kid. And I think Lauren Miller is really, really I good. Mean, a player that when you set a record for goals in a season, yeah. that tells you something. Also, basketball will begin. The Bison men play an exhibition game Wednesday night against Mary. The women come up on Thursday against Crookston. You look at those teams, and we're going to get into previews on them later on in the week, but preliminarily so. Expectations high for Dave Richmond's team, second in the Summit League heading in after back-to-back -back trips to the NCAA tournament. I'm not really high on the expectations because when you lose Lawrence Alexander, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you lose just one of the all-time great players in program history. I, I think uh, I'm going to... I'm going to hold back a little bit on saying they're going to you know, be a favorite for the Summit League or anything. I need to see how somebody else steps up. Now, you're not going to take all of L.A.'s production in one player. No. But 
several other guys, you know, A.J. Jackson's got to have a, a really good year. Paul Miller's got to take that next step mm -hmm. up. Carlin Dupree's got to take over the point guard. Now, can he handle that for 40 minutes or, you know, over the course of right. a game, that's going to be uh, interesting to see. And how does Dexter Werner get better after the season he had? And there's a ton of incoming freshmen as well that are going to play and play a lot. We'll have more on them. And obviously with the buys and women, Marin Walsuth in her second year, not a lot of depth on this team and also not a lot of seniority on this squad. I'm curious to see how year two goes for her. Yeah, and I, she's far away. She's she, That program's got a ways to go yeah. just in recruiting. I mean, you look at the number of players they're bringing in next year. Yeah, like seven. Seven already. Seven mm -hmm. players next year. So what's that tell you about this year? I mean, and Holly Johnson's starting the year off with uh, a foot problem. Foot injury, I, yeah. I just don't have high expectations, nor mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else should have high expectations because the program, when she took it over, was so far yeah. in the tank just in the recruiting area and – and, and personnel. It takes a while. It takes yeah. a while to build up. But we'll have much more on basketball, obviously, as the season gets going. Full week of coverage. Colpac will break down the helmets for you this entire week. You can follow that on the blog. As we get set for Western Illinois, we'll be back with you. Colpac and Izzo live at the Dome on Saturday morning. The pregame show comes up at noon with a 2.30 kickoff back inside the Dome for Western Illinois and NDSU. For Jeff Colpac, I'm Don Izzo. That's the Bison Video Blog.